Thanks for coming. Uh, welcome to the press conference for our newest head coach, the 45th in team history, Ryan Dinwood. Ryan's uh, offensive resume speaks for itself. He's been the quarterback's coach in Calgary the last four years. Um, the goalie by Mitchell under Ryan has transformed into a two-time CFL most ascending player, led the league in touchdowns both years, led the league in yards. And then we saw this year Nick Arbuckle under Ryan step up into a potential future um, starting quarterback in this league. So we're excited to see his brand of football in Toronto, and I'll pass it over to team president, Bill Manning. Thank you everyone for coming. I'm excited to uh, welcome Ryan um, to our organization. Um, you know, when we brought pinball on at the end of October, um, I asked him to really look at every facet of the organization, and, um, and he did. And he, he met a lot of people, he asked a lot of questions, and uh, you know, a few weeks ago, um, he came and he said, "I think we, uh, I think we should consider changing our head coach." And we um, we talked about it, and we talked about the ramifications of that. We talked about um, is that the right direction, and uh, it all pointed to finding the right coach. And uh, Ryan came on our radar screen, and uh, Pinball spent uh, spent a lot of time getting to know Ryan, um, along with John Murphy. And a uh, decision was made that uh, if Ryan would, would leave Calgary, which uh, um, obviously uh, that organization and their results speaks for themselves, um, we felt it was uh, the right move to make. So I'm going to ask Pinball to uh, elaborate a bit on that. Um, but uh, we do welcome Ryan to the Toronto Orleans. Excellent, excellent. Well, first we want to thank our uh, uh, ownership group, uh, they are uh, smart, savvy, and supportive. Uh, MLSE is uh, just a tremendous organization and, and uh, so proud of uh, the support they have uh, given us along the way. We um, uh, want to thank our, our leader, Larry Tambaum, who is, um, I, I, I just believe, the best owner in sports. And so I, um, I want to say a big thank you uh, there first. Uh, this, this, this move, um, uh, was not intended. Uh, we wanted to move on um, and um, uh, build around uh, what what uh, what had begun, and uh, it, it became uh, increasingly um, apparent that um, that we we were doing too much looking back. There were too many things that we too many answers we were trying to do looking back, and and so in order to move forward, uh, that. The, the best way was was uh, to do this, and and uh, not only that, um, the decision was made to build. So they, they ask us about building something, not just doing something, but building something. Uh, it is not that the Toronto Argonauts have not won their share of championships. When we look at uh, uh, the Grey Cup champion this year, they hadn't hadn't uh, won the championship in 29 years. Right? Uh, Hamilton, the uh, team on the other side, hadn't won it for 20 years. Uh, we've, uh, in that same time, won the Great Cup six times. But we've gone up and down and up and down and up and down. And, and, and that's really been the challenge. And so this really is consistency, is continuity. And, and so when, um, when we look at the decision that we made today, we, um, we, we, decide, we decided that the best thing was to build, right? And to build it with that young guy, you know, who is the next guy, if you will, right? Does that make sense? And in, in, in saying that, um, some, uh, ooh, it's, it's been a long time ago uh, when I came, but my first coach, uh, Bob Obilovich, uh, was hired around the same, almost the same age that Ryan is today. And uh, uh, he was hired to build, and he's uh, um, uh, one of the guys who has the one of the longer winning streaks uh, in Argo history, that consistency in doing it uh, right time and time again. And, and if we uh, look around the league, uh, there are a guy's name, uh, Dave Dickinson, that was uh, the next one. Uh, Scott Milanovic was the next one. As we uh, look around the league, we, we see guys who were the next one 
right? And and stayed and built their organizations. And so we're, we're so proud here to have uh, Ryan uh, beside us here today. And um, the when when we think about setting culture and building culture. Uh, one of the things uh, that we talked about is being present, being here in the city, uh, during the off season, being here, uh, being able to uh, interact with players as they come through and doing their workouts and different things they do for the off season. Uh, guys that are here, and so not only is Ryan going to be here and make this home, uh, but mo most of his staff is also going to do the same thing. Being present, being here is a huge part of setting culture. The other thing is we need guys who would grind, right? They, not only to be here, it's, be, it's one, one thing to be here, but, but it's another thing to have the discipline to get the work done. There's a saying we all must suffer one of two pains in life, either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And, and in building culture, uh, that discipline, having grinders, uh, was another thing that was imperative. The next thing was teachers. Um, guys who can teach the game. I, I used to tell my coaches uh, when, when I coached, teach not tell, right? It's not your job to tell them, it, it's your job to, be, to teach them. And, and teaching takes time. It, it's, it's patience when, when, you, when you teach, right? So, so when we talk about that, um, there's always something that happens in a game and, and, um, and, and if, you, if you see something happen in a game, you can turn around and you can look at that fan in the second row. And that fan in the second row is telling you, right? It's not the coach's job to tell them. It's the coach's job to teach them. And teaching requires patience. It takes time. So, so being present, right, and being people who will grind, right? Then we need teachers, and that leads to winners, right? And this guy is one at every level. I uh, was asking him, oh, so Ryan, just trying to make conversation. What other sports do you enjoy? Like, what do you watch? Who are your other teams? He said, I only watch football. <laughs> and um, Murph was uh, referencing a comment his dad made that uh, someone asked how long he had been around football, and his dad says, well, he was, uh, he was so small that one time uh, he actually got zipped up in the ball bag. <laughs> he was playing in the ball bag. He had to be a real little guy, about maybe even uh, just older than his son at, at that point. And he actually got zipped up in the ball bag. He was uh, so small and so young. And so uh, this guy has uh, football in his genes. Uh, um, and he has uh, also been around some of the best of all time. I believe his efficiency rating was number one in college football history. When he left Boise, he's considered one of the best players in uh, their school's history. Uh, he is a teacher. He is a disciple of uh, one of the brightest minds, that Dave Dickinson, and comes from that John Huffnagel and probably the best organization in our league the last several years. And um, I want to introduce you at this point, the next one, Ryan Dibley. Fun following that. Yeah, I know it, right? I'm not a uh, professional speaker like Pinball. They don't pay, pay me millions to speak. But uh, anyhow, I'm beyond excited to be here. Uh, obviously, um, know the challenge that we have. Uh, the last two years are unacceptable in this organization. You know, um, wins and losses is how you measure success. And I think we got to start getting on the uh, win column and start building this thing the right way. And uh, I feel like we can get that done with our leadership. And uh, I look forward to that challenge. And uh, we're going to hit the ground running. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, ownership first. Obviously, Larry Tannenbaum, uh, Dale Lastman for getting this thing done and, and obviously pulling the trigger and believing me. Uh, obviously, you know, MLSE, uh, Maple Leafs uh, Sports Entertainment as well, and obviously the Toronto Argonauts uh, just for getting this thing together. Obviously, Bill Manning as well. I got to thank Bill for pulling the trigger and getting this done. Obviously, Michael being a big influence of me. Uh, deciding on this job as well, but also having the, um, the courage to pick me, being a young coach that hasn't been a head coach, so I appreciate that as well. And obviously John Murphy, the guy that kind of orchestrated this whole thing. Um, so he kind of got the ball rolling, and so uh, I appreciate that, Murph. Thanks a lot. Uh, with that, uh, I got to obviously uh, thank the Calgary Stampeders, uh, obviously uh, Dave Dickinson and John Huffenagel. Um, I mean, I learned a lot from the last four years. They brought me into the, that organization, taught me how to do things the right way, and brought me from a dysfunctional place that I couldn't wait to get out of. So um, they, they did a lot for me, and so I appreciate them as well. 
Um, obviously, now I have to thank my wife and my son, Lance, in there. Um, yeah, we're going to make our, our home year-round here. So it's a big move for her, and she's uh, supported me in that, so I appreciate that. Um, as well, uh, i got to thank my family as well uh, back home in California. They're excited for the move. Uh, they'll be up here in Toronto quite a bit. Um, being a football family, they, they can't wait for this opportunity for me and obviously for the whole family. So look forward to that. And obviously, I one guy i got to thank is Jim Pop, who brought me in this league as a football coach. Obviously, kind of got the ball rolling here. And, and the way he you know, believed in me and talked about me with these, these guys here, I think that was a big influence on them feeling comfortable to make this decision. So. You know, that's huge. And obviously, I want to build a relationship with the players. That's the first thing I'm on my uh, radar. i got to reach out to those guys and kind of see where they're at. And I know they've had a rough two years. And um, let them, you know, kind of see what I'm all about. And so i got to start building those relationships with those guys. And obviously, we're going to look at the roster. And uh, I'm excited about the opportunity here. Um, now, on top of that, offensively, uh, obviously, that's what I got brought in here to do. We're going to be an exciting football team, right? We're going to be aggressive. We're going to be sound, though. We're, like I always said in my interview, you got to have a mirror. You got to know that you're being sound and you're teaching the right thing. So we'll have core concepts, but we're going to be uh, explosive and we're going to build off that each week. And so I look forward to that as well. Now, defensively, we got to hire the right guy. But I want a guy that come in here that's going to be aggressive, right? We're not going to sit back and just uh, bleed to death, right? We're going to go attack. And uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. Special teams-wise, I think you got to be a, a physical football team. I think it starts there. And so we're going to hire the right guy to, to get that done. And obviously, uh, we need some guys that are willing from the U.S. to come in here and play special teams before they actually get on the field. That's going to be a huge culture. We're going to have to uh, really set in their minds because it's going to be tough for those guys as well as the young Canadians, right? They haven't seen the field quite yet. We're going to develop those guys, but they're going to be huge on our special teams. And so I look forward to uh, um, building this roster and building this team with these guys. The reason why I took this job because I feel comfortable with the leadership with Bill, and I really feel good about our conversations there. He wants to win. He'll do whatever it takes to win. Obviously, Michael, I can run a lot of things by him. He's been in my chair, right? He's been a head coach, been very successful in this league. And so um, he's going to be a huge sounding board for me. And then obviously our scouting department with Vince and Murph, I know they're going to do a heck of a job and get us the pieces that we need. And then we'll put this thing together. But again, I'm excited for the opportunity. I know there's some challenges. I know I'm a first year head coach, but we're going to get to work and we're going to get this thing done. Questions? The most Brian? important thing that you bring to this organization is the experience from what I'm listening to, the dysfunctionality of one organization to the very good functionality of another organization. Tell us about how important that is. It's huge. You know, obviously I've been in a spot in Montreal where it's kind of dysfunctional at times and you know we got to the Eastern Final uh, the one year I was offense coordinator there and we went through a lot and uh, I thought that molded me into becoming a um, a football coach and uh, really just to understand the ups and downs and you're going to have adversity quite a bit uh, throughout the season. You can be 10-0 and 0 and then you lose four games in a row and then you're going to hit that, ooh, what's going on next? So um, to have the support that you need from the top is huge and that they're going to allow you to do the job that you they brought you in to do. But I think there's a way to do things and that's day in and day out. Uh, just being organized as you can, having a, um, requirements of your staff, right? What you expect of those guys and the requirements for your players. Like, I'm a player's coach. My players are going to love me, but I'm going to be very demanding and I'm going to expect a lot from them. And that starts with me. Ryan, you talked about uh, staff. Have you, have you thought of any names? Are you looking at more experienced guys to surround you with? Oh, yeah. I want experienced staff and I don't want a, a young group of guys. Like, I've told many friends no in the last few weeks uh, that have heard <laughs> some things about this, which is tough to do in this business. But I want to have guys that are uh, caring about their players. Like we said, like Michael said, teachers, okay, and that are very organized. They're going to get as much out of their meeting time as possible and do the right thing. So right now we're looking at quality coaches more than uh, friends and young. I want to have a variety of old and young, but I think we'll get the right guys in the building. I've obviously talked to some guys, and we haven't finalized it quite yet, but we're going to get it done here soon. You mentioned, you mentioned Jim Pop. Did you interview last year for the head coaching job as well? No, just the offense coordinator job. And, uh, you know, I just uh, my wife was pregnant at the time, uh, so it wasn't the right time for us to move. Obviously, I was intrigued by the, the situation, but obviously uh, becoming a head coach uh, was too hard to pass up, and I'm excited for the opportunity. For Michael and, and uh, Bill, what really stood out for Ryan during the meeting process? Uh, and Bully, you want to uh, yeah, The, yes, uh, his, mute, his, 
obsession with excellence. Uh, his desire to prepare to win is the big thing. Uh, he is a workaholic. He's in early. Uh, he'll beat me there every day, and, uh, and, and almost every day he will leave after me. And uh, so it is that, that just exhaustive desire uh, to win, to be great, to prepare to win. And uh, yeah, uh, the great Vince Lombardi said, greater than the will to win is the will to prepare to win. And uh, it is that preparation process. It is that discipline uh, that he has uh, that is most compelling uh, for me. You know, we, um, uh, Bill and I um, have a, a favorite saying, if you take an off season, you'll have one, right? And, uh, uh, and, and so with that, we um, realize that we need to make better use of our off season and uh, in our talks with him in the preparation process and, and what is intended are starting with being here, physically being here and then going on with the preparation process many things that he's actually borrowed from uh, his uh, previous destination um, is is what really I, I think uh, emboldened this decision uh, he is uh, he coaches the most important position on our field right we we know that we you know, the quarterback position is it. Now, more important than that is is the offensive line because they got to keep those those guys uh, keep the quarterback erect. But he's he's played the quarterback position extremely proficiently. Um, when you look at you know the best efficiency rating in in college football history at the time, I believe it was, and 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 uh, and, and and then not only playing it, then transforming, and he, he play, played at uh, it NFL. NFL Europe as well as uh, here in the Canadian Football League and that 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 ability now to translate and to communicate uh, we want to have ex play exciting football we want to um, have uh, uh, just a product that our, our fans really enjoy and uh, he, he, uh, he, he he gives us the chance to do that mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it, it would be impossible to say that. Yes. Well, have you envisioned being the OC or quarterback's coach? Or would you like to strictly focus on being the head coach? Uh, I'll be heavily involved in that. Obviously, I'm going to hire a guy to do that. But it's going to be very similar to the structure we had in Calgary where Dave was the head coach, offense coordinator. But I ran a lot of the things uh, that he didn't have time to do. So obviously, I did all the meetings and uh, those things. So I'm going to hire a guy to do that. I'll be heavily involved, but at the same time, I got to prioritize myself as a head coach as well, and I can't lose sight of that. Well, I think we're all going to be um, mutually uh, explaining our thoughts and kind of work this thing together. I think that's important. That was one of the th reasons why I came here. I think I uh, feel a good working relationship with these guys, and we'll talk things out. We'll obviously do that uh, all together. Ryan, regardless of what quarterback is the quarterback, the key for you is to bring the quarterback up to a level that is expected in the Canadian Football League. What do you what do you what do you see as your goals and how you're going to achieve the goal of whoever it is there? Because Arbuckle did a great job for you in, in Calgary. So it's not a question of whether it's a name guy, right? Yeah, no doubt. I think we got to look at all avenues, uh, who we want to bring in, if that's a, a opportunity, and obviously look at the guys we have in, in the building right now. Um, so we'll we'll look at everything we can to find the right guy. But I think uh, and myself, getting the right guy in here, I'll, I'll develop him. You know, obviously, obviously, what I did with Nick, and obviously, I think I took Bo to another level as well. But obviously, people forget about what I did with Jonathan Crompton in 2014, and we went nine and three to finish that season. So, I think I have a track record for it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to start off with, we're going to protect the quarterback. Okay, now that obviously you got to get the right guys up front to do it. But schematically, there's ways you can protect the quarterback, and that was our number one thing in Calgary. And I learned a lot from Huff. Uh, in regards to that and we want to keep that guy upright we want to make sure he can last all 18 games and plus three hopefully and uh, so that's where we're going to start off with this make sure we handle protections first and then we'll build off of that I, I answered a question improperly a little bit ago so it's not impossible it's impractical okay all right I'm sorry <laughs> Michael, when, Some say when, when Brian's hired are there any financial concerns or repercussions because you had to part ways with Corey. Does, does Ryan have a clean slate to hire whomever he feels is 
is worthy to be part of the staff? Uh, every season has different nuances. He 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 has the ability. We've already talked about that. So he'll he'll have the ability he he needs. It doesn't. Um, you you have different things that occur in in any particular season uh, that doesn't. It, so so you're you're not unlimited. We do have a cap, right? Um, but but um, he is he's organized. He's he's talked to to people, uh, and he ha he has a, a, a strong uh, base, a strong understanding of the direction he'd like to go, and will support him uh, um, uh, to get there. Right. Michael, what's your next to do list? Um. Uh, how, how, how long do I have to answer this question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, we, I, I, I don't want to give you uh, a, you know, sort of a byline of the job description. The, obviously, the very next thing to do, the most important thing to do, is to help him get the staff together. And that's what we'll be working to um, uh, initially. And, and uh, we'll keep moving, uh, kind of moves on into uh, the uh, players and evaluations and, and uh, making sure at that point uh, that uh, the guys that are free agents with us, right, we'll be looking at them. And then you go on to, uh, free agency itself, and then that climbs on into uh, the the uh, the draft. Uh, but many, 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 many things in, to do in between there. And off, uh, Ryan, Ryan is not just a babe in the woods when it comes to the Canadian Football League. You've played in the Canadian Football League. You've managed in the Canadian Football League. So the <clears> people <throat> that are working under you right now that may or may not be working under you, you have a a clear understanding, a pretty good understanding of the people that are there waiting for you, that you can make an educated decision and then from that standpoint decide how you, what you can keep and who you can fill in? Yeah, obviously you look at the guys that are here, right? There's some quality coaches that are still here in the building and obviously you got to look at all avenues when it comes to that. But I have a good feel for some of the guys I've reached out to that are uh, not not nearly f exactly friends of mine, but uh, guys I know and I uh, feel good about their character and I've I've done some research on these guys as well and called people across the league that I know. So experience is huge, obviously, especially in your coordinator roles. I think experience is, is uh, you know, that's the number one priority, right, is coordinator that's been in this league. Uh, now, position coaches, you could probably get some guys from the states that don't have that experience or maybe a CIS coach, maybe. Uh, but we're going to look at uh, building the best staff for this organization. The year before that, uh, you had a defensive coordinator in Calgary who went to BC and did exactly what you're trying to avoid. Is that a lesson? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I and uh, just the way I'm approached things a little bit differently than he did, and obviously uh, he felt like he uh, knew it all. And I'm not saying that I do, but I feel confident in the role that I'm going to play for this organization. And I know that it's uh, going to take a lot of hard work, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll up our sleeves and get to work. We were here a he few mentioned months back. Yeah. Uh, Michael and Sarah, you talked about changing the culture of the organization. How much does Ryan help start changing that culture back to a winning attitude around here? It, it, it's the word pinball and I use every day, right, when we talk. Um, and we've seen it with, with the other franchises, right, what Brendan's done with the Leafs and Masai's done with uh, the Raps, obviously with TFC. And at 4-14, four and 14, two years in a row, it's hard to build a, a culture. Um, that leads to winning and, and, you know, and I tell you, this was, we did not go into this off season, even coming off four and 14, looking to make a change. Um, but I did ask pinball, uh, to evaluate everything. And he said, I think we have the wrong culture and we need to change the culture here at the Argos. And so obviously his hiring was the first step in that process. Um, and now hiring Ryan and, you know, when I met Ryan, what most impressed me, and this came together extremely quickly, guys, um, he had a plan. And it wasn't, you know, hey, I, I want to be a head coach. It was, I'm ready to be a head coach. I've studied your team. Here's what I would do. Here are the steps that I would make. And, you know, again, I look at the organization he came from with John Huffnagel, um, and it's similar to, you know, what John Murphy learned there, um, what a good organization looks like and how they operate every single day. And, you know, I want to win. And, and it's most important to us and our organization. And I think Ryan is going to put together the building blocks we need, which starts with culture first. Um, to get us to where we eventually want to be, which is to be a consistent contender. Uh, that's where we want to be. And so um, I really, um, 
I wanted to side is probably the wrong word. I wanted to um, give pinball what he felt was the most important thing right now, which was a coaching change uh, to change our culture. Michael, did you interview other candidates? Um, we, we did talk to people, right, but uh, we did the research ahead of time, and uh, um, as we went into it, we were looking to build, right? We weren't looking for a quick fix, right? We weren't looking for that, um, the, shiny, the shiny wheel of the day, right? When you look historically and you do a little bit of historical evaluations, it's, uh, it's pretty clear, right? And, uh, um, you know, it, it is worked here in MLSE and in, in the organization, um, cer certainly at some level, um, you know, there's still history just still has to, to prove that out. Uh, but um, historically, um, as we went back, there are um, uh, quite a few examples of of, of you know the guys at this age coming through and not only um, having success right but also staying with teams longer right when you when you when you hire the guy who's already the hired gun right uh, he's more likely to go in somewhere else when when you hire the guy who is the next one right there seems to be an appreciation and and guys have a greater uh, tendency um, and uh, there are many many examples if you look at the best coaches around um, when guys got that opportunity just before right uh, they've um, th they've more often stayed with those programs and teams and and built over time talked a lot about, about the off season and I know last year I think you know Jim spent Jim's home was in North Carolina and I think Corey's was in Arizona correct um, I mean just tell us why you felt that was void in the organization and why you wanted to have more presence with your coaches and people um, I believe uh, that our presence in community uh, is imperative that's a, a part of who we are and so I, I hate going back and you know, talk, I, I believe regardless of who was here, regardless of what was happening, if they were here before, they needed to be here now. If they weren't, they need to be here. So I, I don't want to sort of say it's a comparison thing. It's it's what I did when I coached here, and, and I thought that was the proper process. It's kind of easy. I already li lived here, right? right. But uh, um, I, but I was a player moving to coach, and, and uh, so um, I, I believe that commitment to a an organization commitment to a city right uh commitment to a plan uh needs your presence very simple and, and ryan, two more questions the, the most obvious thing on your resume is a little different than a lot of guys who get this opportunity is you haven't been a coordinator that often you were in montreal in 2014 yeah. correct yeah um did that come up in the conversations about your lack of experience as a coordinator and, and how was it addressed? Oh, I think we talked it out. You know, I think they wanted to see my offensive philosophies and, and kind of um, went through the experience of 2014 with these guys and what we accomplished there and just kind of my day-to-day -day role in Calgary. And obviously, I wasn't calling the plays, but I've spent a lot of time. I scripted training camp. I scripted practices, right? I was making sure we took care of the scout team looks. That was all my responsibilities, which coordinator, you know, uh, has to do. I just didn't call the plays or run the – one meeting when we're with the receivers that Dave did, but I was very heavily involved. So they know that my track record and the experience the last few years, I, I did a lot of those duties and I feel like they uh, felt comfortable with me that I'd be uh, a good offense coordinator, but also that I'd hire a good offense coordinator and oversee everything that I needed to do. Michael, what did you think what, what did you think was wrong with the team culture in the past and what kind of culture would you like to see going forward? Uh, and that's the biggest thing. Um, when, when you go come into a situation like this, you have more questions than answers, right? Um, you, when, when we speak to what happened before, right, that was really the challenge is we kept having to speak w about what happened before. Right. The, uh, the, the, the concept here is not that there were, you know, that we didn't have coaches who were competent or or those kinds of things. The idea is the conversation w would always be about what happened next year or, or what happened last year, I should say. Right. This is this decision is in part just an opportunity for everybody to move forward. Not, not talk about the what ifs, right? Uh, when you have two, four, uh, four and 14 seasons and, and you know, there are some other statistical things um, there with, with uh, our head coach there um, uh, that you can continue to harp on and go back to. This was a legitimate chance for us to move forward and that's what we're trying to do today. And so I, 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 I 
prefer um, for from this uh, this point forward we will we will do that we will move forward rather than trying to a answer questions about yesterday great thanks everyone we'll do a quick photo op with the three gentlemen up here and then we'll open it up to uh, one on ones thank you everybody thank you all right you want to hold the helmet yeah let's do it